Hey YouTube, Kyle here. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different uh, from a lot of the videos that I do in that it's going to cover a whole bunch of different products. Um, so since the year began in January, I've been, every single day, I've been drawing as a, a practice to try to get better at it. Um, I've been posting all of my stuff to uh, crummyfigures.tumblr.com. Um, and I don't remember when exactly I got it, but I think sometime in February, maybe, I purchased an iPad Pro. So, this is that. Um, I've mostly been using the app Procreate. Get rid of this stuff. Uh, so this is Procreate. I've mostly been using this. Um, and over time, I've kind of bought more and more accessories that have made my experience with using the app and Procreate together better and better. Um, I think the first and the most essential thing is to get, if you're using it for drawing specifically, is to get one of these. Um, this is a screen protector. This variation is by iCares, and I'm going to have links to all this stuff in the footer. Uh, in the description. So this comes with two, so if you mess up you can uh, try again, but it comes with two different screen protectors and it has like pretty simple instructions. Basically you like align the screen protector with where you need it to be and then you, they give you stickers and you put it on and then you can kind of like fold it like a book and then it's attached. Um, for me, I had to go back in and uh, get some bubbles out, but overall I got it pretty good and there's not really any bubbles. You can probably see like fingerprints and stuff on here. Um, but that's just because I use it a lot and I don't really clean the screen very much. Um, the benefits of this is that it, it gives you additional drag on the Apple Pencil and it uh, causes the screen to be a matte screen. The drag is the biggest reason that I wanted it because the first couple days that I used this, I was uh, just drawing directly on the glass and it, it felt very, very slippery and it was hard to get like good lines, um, especially when you're doing like detailed stuff. Like if I spin this around, if you're doing detailed stuff like this, it, it becomes really, really difficult to, to control if, if you're doing it like that. Um, Second thing, um, the second thing that I'd recommend, and I'll get the iPad out of the way because it doesn't really need to be here. So the second thing is this, it's called the Bracketron, and I think on Amazon it's called the Bracketron Durable iPad Stand. I originally had gotten this as something I meant to replace the stand that came with my Cintiq with, um, but I ended up preferring the way that the Cintiq felt because the Cintiq, the 13 HD is like quite a bit wider than the iPad. So when you'd go to the sides, it would be like tilting. Um, this one actually works perfectly for the iPad Pro in both per, uh, portrait and landscape modes. Um, when it's with portrait, you do have to be careful about drawing towards the top of the screen because it does tend to want to tilt the iPad back. So I usually just like put a thumb or something at the bottom uh, and that takes care of it. Um, but yeah, this is a really good stand. It's very durable. You can see that there's like a metal bar, a bent wire bar. It's pretty thick, probably about two millimeters. Um, and that is put into like this series of brackets, thus Bracketron. Um, so you, you have a bunch of different settings, you can get it at all these different angles and it can go from a pretty high angle to a fairly low angle if that's what you're looking for for a drawing stand. So I think this is a really good one. It does kind of creak and stuff a little bit, but it feels solid, so I'm happy with it. Um, so that's the iPad, the screen protector, and I guess the, the case is like the Apple smart cover is important, but that's kind of an aside. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do these two things as a, a combo 
combo. Um, this is the MoxieWare stand and the MoxieWare sleeve. Um, so the stand, for some reason, originally I had wanted to put the cap, it has a place for the cap to go in, and I wanted to put it with the rounded part up, but I found that once it was in there, it was really, really hard to get it back out. So after getting this all set up, it uses the adapter that comes with the pencil. Um, this is just a standard lightning cable and you feed that through. There's like this bottom part that screws on and has like torques. It doesn't have torques, it has uh, flathead screws at the bottom. Um, sorry, I don't know why I thought it had torques. Um, so the adapter's in there, a lightning cable's in there. It's all kind of like sealed together. So it ends up being like a really good base where you can have this plugged into a wall. You can have it charging whenever you're not using it. Um, if you put the cap in this way, you can just click the back right into there and then it's on and you're good to go. Um, I like this because it gives you a place to constantly put your pencil so you always know where it is uh, and it's great. Um, it's very, very simple, but it works really well. Um, I had originally wanted the one, there's a, a second variation that comes with this top part made out of wood, I think probably maple, or not maple, uh, walnut. And I wanted that one quite a bit, but they, I like waited a month or so and they didn't come back in stock yet. So I just ended up pulling the trigger on the aluminum one. Um, it's also got these like pretty good rubber feet that keeps it from moving around too much. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty simple device, but I always like knowing where my, uh, my pencil is. And before I had this, I was a, a kind of constant trade off between what was getting charged. I'd either have to charge the iPad or charge the pencil. And usually because I'm drawing every day, the iPad, it pretty much always needs charging. Um, so I'd always like use that for a bit. The pencil charge is pretty fast, but it was kind of a pain to kind of be trading back and forth. Um, so let me get this out of the way and we can talk about the cover sleeve thing. So this is basically just what it looks like. It's a, a piece of, I don't even know, like rubberish type stuff that slides over the pencil itself. It, this square bar thing is a magnet. Um, the benefit of that, let me get the iPad. Uh, the benefit of that is that it gives you an area where you can attach to the iPad screen. So you can see it kind of shift into place there. Um, so that gets attached into quite a few different places around the iPad. I don't think it does on the base. Um, you have to kind of like look around and find it can go onto the back in some places. Um, but once it's there, it attaches fairly solidly. Um, I wouldn't use the attachment as a means of transporting it really um, but if you need to like set the pencil down and you don't want it to like roll away or not know where it is it's good to kind of just stick it to stuff um, if the smart cover is closed it attaches pretty solidly to it but um, again I don't like if it's in a bag and it gets like horizontal push it'll come off fairly easily so um, I have a, a travel case that I use by Burden Bell and I use that to, as a sleeve for the pencil to go into. Um, I guess I should show that too. I don't know where it is right now, so I'm not going to. No, it's over there. It's good. It's a good felt case. Um, and lastly, the last thing is a lot of the apps that you use with the iPad Pro claim to have palm rejection. And with the Apple Pencil, it's supposed to be like this amazing, great palm rejection. Um, with Procreate specifically, when I wanted to like quickly like do rotation or zooming, I noticed that it, it kind of wasn't very responsive. Um, and there are settings to turn down how strict the palm rejection is. Um, and each time I turned it down, I found that it improved the sensitivity. Um, so I turned it all the way off and I started using this again. This is something that I had bought a, probably two years ago at this point. Um, it's basically just a glove that you put on and it 
makes your hand non-capacitive. So you can still use these fingers for zooming and twisting and stuff, but then you have your whole side of your hand protected and you can just put that on the screen and use it and then rotate like normal. I find it's a much better workflow for me. Um, and as you can see, mine's kind of starting to come apart, which I should probably fix at some point. But yeah, for me, I really think that this glove with no palm rejection is the way to go. Um, you look really silly, obviously. Like I don't look like very cool with this on, but for what I'm using it for drawing at home, only my girlfriend can make fun of me for wearing it. And I guess anyone that watches me on Twitch streams, which hasn't come up too much. Um, when I when I stream, I also have this on because I wanted to take care of my wrist. Um, I noticed that by drawing every day, I was feeling a bit more strain on my wrist. So this is a copper compression sleeve thing. Um, and I wear both of these at the same time. So this is the sleeve that goes on and it kind of just like has a tight area around the wrist, which gives it some, some more support. And then you can put this on over it and look like kind of a weird future person wearing crazy clothing. Um, I find that this does help out, um, but it's not really necessary unless you're worried that your wrist is going to get junked up which if you're drawing every day and you're not using like your whole arm to draw, it might be. That's something I'm working on. I noticed that I use my wrist a lot like this instead of my whole arm, which is how you're supposed to do it. But I'm lazy, so I haven't really been pushing myself too hard to switch over. But yeah, that's kind of my suite of things that I use when I'm using my iPad for drawing. I think the iPad Pro is an amazing drawing tool the Apple Pencil is just fantastic. Um, I think I like the way it deals with pressure sensitivity more than the Cintiq. Um, it just feels more natural to me, and I've adjusted the pressure curves on the Cintiq, and I can't really get it to feel the same way as this. Um, I also think I like the smaller form factor. It feels more like an, a pen that you'd be used to drawing with, as opposed to like this one that's like big and bulbous, like all of the into us and Cintiq pens are. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all the stuff that I use and I endorse all of it. There will be links to everything in the footer. And why do I keep saying footer? There'll be links to everything in the description. Um, so yeah, like if you liked it, don't like it if you didn't. And if you want to see more videos like this, give me a subscription and I'll try to do more. Um, I also have all my art streams kind of archived on here, so if you're interested in that kind of thing too, check those out. Um, until next time, thanks again. Peace.